Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and I'm here today to talk to you again about uh, sound masking, how it works, why it works, how it might be right for you, and um, basically a little bit more in depth about uh, the behind the scenes of it all. All right, so sound masking. What is sound masking? We hear the term a lot. Some people actually call it noise masking also. Sound masking is a popular uh, acoustic process of adding uh, specific ambient background sound engineered to match the frequency of human speech in order to reduce distractions, protect speech privacy, and to increase comfort of uh, your staff, your listener, your participant, uh, your customers, etc. cetera. Um, so why sound masking? Sound masking is there to help protect sensitive content, you know, to kind of enhance your overall worker comfort um, and productivity by eliminating some of the distractions around them and also uh, protect individual privacy, whether that's uh, your staff that you have in your call center, whether that's your patient in your medical facility like your uh, doctor's office or clinic, uh, whether it's the sensitive conversation that the HR department is having in the boardroom or in the CEO's office, uh, lots of different applications there. Um, sound masking has become really important because of the transition to more like open architecture type floor plans. Uh, cubicle farms, cube farms, uh, you know, call center type areas where you might have lots of people in a very tightly enclosed space. Um, you know, there might be somebody in a, a cubicle farm that's sitting, you know, just a couple of feet from me. So the question becomes, how can I focus on my job and not pay attention to what they have going on? There comes sound masking. By being able to, uh, you know, putting a speaker uh, and essentially a distributed audio system above the ceiling, uh, above the plenum area, or in the ceiling pointing down, we can basically um, add this consciously acoustically tuned um, masking that helps to uh, make your listener, your participant, focus more on the masking rather than what else is going on. Uh, I use the example with my customers all the time of, you know, you're sitting around the office, you're sitting around the house, you've got the air conditioner running, uh, you don't really notice that it's running, but all of a sudden when it shuts off, you can hear, you know, a pin drop in the room down the hall. You know, you can hear the TV on over there, you can hear somebody working over there, that kind of thing. So by being able to have that masking running, um, it what we call raises the overall noise floor so that you're basically more comfortable by listening to the masking rather than listening to just the silence. So by focusing in on the masking, our brains pay more attention to it, less to the uh, uh, stimuli or whatever else is going on uh, next to us. So sound masking is not exactly the same as white noise. Uh, although sometimes white noise generators are involved in masking systems, uh, masking is actually tuned specifically to make it as pleasant as possible, uh, but also to make it um, focus in on um, the, the speech frequencies so we're less inclined to listen to exactly what's going on next to us. Here. Does sound masking work? Absolutely. Uh, sound masking works first, like I mentioned, by kind of canceling out some of the speech frequencies, but also by you know raising that overall noise floor, uh, which helps us to limit distractions, which makes your workers more productive and it enhances their privacy as well. So sound masking, like I mentioned, can be used in military facilities, um, sometimes called SCIFs, um, as well as uh, anywhere where you really need uh, lots of privacy and to enhance worker productivity. A couple of different kinds of sound masking. There's uh, what's called indirect, which is a speaker pointing up, uh, which is like the Atlas solution here, which is mounted inside the plenum space. And then there's also uh, indirect sound masking, which is a ceiling speaker pointed down. Um, we can distribute both, and both can be correct in various applications. Uh, for more on that, uh, reach out to us and we can discuss a little bit further on those solutions. So another question that comes up lots of times is, instead of doing sound masking, can I just use music? Um, technically, I would say the answer is no. Uh, masking differs from music in that it's basically a constant. Uh, just like that air conditioning running in the background, it's always kind of set the same and stays there at the same volume. Uh, with music, uh, obviously you have high notes, low notes, you have fast parts, you have slow parts, you have things changing, you have songs stopping and starting. So our minds kind of pay a little bit more attention to it of, oh, I really like this song, or uh, yeah, and especially if it has lyrics, you're paying more attention to the lyrics, which, you know, may still allow you to work, but may change worker productivity. And also when that song stops, sometimes you can start to hear what's going on in the conference room behind you. 
Uh, so masking helps to lay that constant, um, always running um, noise floor. Uh, however, you know, to really change the ambiance of your space, you can always put music on top of the masking uh, to kind of help control what's going on in your location a little bit more. Um, and that can also help to uh, increase worker productivity, but we always want to run that masking first to give that baseline uh, level of uh, privacy protection as well as to raise that overall noise floor a bit. Sound masking is uh, simple to do, high quality, and really gives you great bang for your buck. Once again, my name's Nathan. Drop us a line down below, let us know you're watching. Um, if there's anything we can help with. Otherwise, get in touch and let us know if we can uh, provide any sound masking solutions for you and your space.